Hello, and welcome to today's evaluations training. Thank you so much for your time, and we do ask three things from our audience. If you have a question or comment that isn't answered in today's training, feel free to make a MyPers ticket, and your ticket will be answered in three to five business days. Once again, once you enter your MyPers ticket, it'll be answered in three to five business days. Lastly, we ask our audience to stay up to date in their Air Force AFIs. For this training, AFI 36-2406 will be our reference. Thank you, and let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. I will be the trainer for today, and I'm going to be going over evaluation appeals, also known as ERAP. First document I'm going to go over with you guys is the application template, so appeal application template, and this is going to be from the field perspective. And I'm just going to kind of go over what it is that we will be looking for from the ARPC ERAB point of view, things that we would like for your application to include. And we're hoping that going over this will kind of alleviate the frustration that sometimes occurs with ERAB with a lot of back and forth. Um, so, you know, we're hoping that this, the training, along with these documents being on MyPERS can help with that. That way, you guys submit us an appeal application that's just good to go, and it can expedite the process in terms of, you know, us getting it once, processing it, and the record being updated, you know, as quickly as possible. I'm also going to kind of just quickly explain what ERAB is utilized for, for those of you that maybe aren't aware or don't, you know, have a, a good understanding of what ERAB is utilized for. So ERAB is utilized to make corrections to evaluations that are already a matter of record, meaning they're already in the member's um, prodder arms. And there's two types of corrections, really. So there's administrative corrections, which is anything where you're just making a simple correction and you're not changing the content or bullets or ratings or the value of the actual evaluation. So you're simply changing someone's name was misspelled or their socials off by a couple of numbers or... Um, the reason for reports incorrect. So things that, you know, again, don't change the content or the value of the actual evaluation. Those are considered administrative corrections. And on the second document that I'll be going with you guys, I'll go ahead and kind of um, mention what we look for in terms of what you need to submit for, for those types of corrections. Then there's also content corrections, which is anytime you're changing content, bullets, ratings, those type of evaluations those are going to always require a board. So just keep that in mind. And again, I'll go more in depth on that um, on the second document that I go over with you guys. Okay, so that's pretty basically the gist of ERAB. Um, please keep in mind ERAB is not utilized to expedite an evaluation for an OPB, so an officer promotion board, a job. That's not what this is. That's not what ERAB is utilized for. It's simply to make corrections to a member's record. Okay, so. At the very top, you guys will see right here where it says, I am submitting this application, and then it says select one. So there's two options. It's for myself, which is anytime you you find a discrepancy in your record and you're asking to make the correction. This request is coming from you directly. Uh, if it's a third party person, it needs to be either the MPF or the CSS in accordance with this AFI reference. Okay, so someone from the MPF or CSS can submit uh, ERAB request on behalf of a member, um, that's not a problem. Okay, up here, where it says member information, this is going to be the member's information in which the record is being corrected. So if MPF or CSS sum is submitting something, this isn't your information, this is still the member's information. Okay, so you'll put their name, their phone number, their primary email address, and their alternate email address in the member information section of the application. Okay, so for application information, this is gonna be a reflection of what is reflected in Prada and ARMS. So type, if you're correcting, let's say a 707, and that's what's, and what's reflected in ARMS says 707, you would put here. So you're going to put 707 here, you're going to want to put the closeout date that again is reflected in prod and arms. So the actual file name, not what's on the OPR or EPR. So closeout date would go here and then requested action. There's three types of actions that you can request. So there's a, to void a report, to substitute report, and then other. 
So if you select to void a report, that's pretty basically implying to us that you have something that's in your record and you want it to be completely taken out. You're not gonna substitute it with anything. You just want it out of your record. So maybe a duplicate got put in there and it's for like you know two years from now. Um, so you just wanna take it out entirely. Or if you wanna substitute a report, which is probably the most common, that is when you have something in your record, it's got you know things wrong with it, and you want to pull that one out and replace it with a new, a new or like corrected copy. And then other sometimes folks will just select that because they're not really sure which direction they need their appeal to go in, so they'll select other. And then under requested action, they'll explain to us what they need. And again, you have up to four. As you can see, you have up to four items. So if you have like if your record is like you know. A hot mess you can go ahead and give us four different things that you want corrected in one application appeal if you have more than that you'll have to obviously submit more than one appeal request but you can do up to four in one request that's not a problem all right so under the requested action block this is where we kind of look for your notes to explain to us what exactly is wrong with your record and maybe what it is that you're trying to correct so we created this template, again, to kind of help with the expedite of processing. Sometimes when things are submitted to us, they're you know, super, super lengthy. Um, if you guys could make this in a list format, that is wonderful because we can just go in and check off what it is you're requesting, ensure that it's within AFI parameters, and we can, it's just, it helps expedite the process. So you would just put, for example, request to remove Air Force 910, the closeout date, to reflect the following corrections. Uh, section two, block one, the duty title is wrong. They, this is what it says, and this is what you wanna change it to. And then number two, section 12, doesn't have the ready signature. We wanted to include the ready signature. So it's just short and to the point, not too vague. Um, we, we, you know, just keep in mind, we can't accept requests where you're just like, my record's wrong. We need to know why to ensure that what you're requesting be corrected is with AFI policy. So always kind of give us what's wrong with it and what you want to change it to. Um, so that way we, we know it's good to go. Reason to support requested action. This block, um, again, you can kind of give us the why. So my record is a mess and I want it to reflect correctly or whatever your reason being for why you're requesting your record be, cor be corrected. The most common thing we see is, you know, my record's messed up and I would like to fix it. That's short and to the point that works for us. So the next section of the application is, do you wish uh, your case to be expedited? So in this particular block, what we look for, again, from ARPC rep perspective, if you select yes, which is right here, you need to ensure that you're providing us a board identification number, okay, and a valid one. So um, the only time that we expedite evaluation appeals is if a member is no joke meeting an OPB. And again, you would have to select yes and you have to provide us with the board identification number. If you just select yes, and then down here in reason for expediting, you put, you know, meeting an OPB, we're not gonna expedite it. Um, so please, please, please keep that in mind, especially for officers. Um, again, just harping on this, because this is a big one. You're gonna hit yes, um, board ID. And then here you can, you know, again, you can tell us like under reason for expediting, I'm meeting an OPB. That's fine, but just make sure you include your identification number. And for about for enlisted side, um, the reason we don't really expedite is because we the turnaround time. I don't know if some of you know it used to be before it used to be 90 to 120 days for like an ERAP to process, whereas now it takes like you know up to like 10 days um, usually. Obviously, systems permitting and things of that nature. Um, so. There's really no like reason to have to expedite enlisted reports um, because the turnaround time is a lot quicker than what it used to be. So for application comments, this is where you'll see comments from us anytime we have something um, that we're kicking it back for or uh, we're requesting, you know, maybe some extra proof of why you're making such a request or a corrected copy of the of your evaluation. This is where our comments will be to you under application comments. Under the additional justification clarification block, in this block, this is where we look for notes from you guys. So if we kick something back to you and then you kick it back to us, this is where we'll go to look for notes. So 
anything where you you want to communicate something with us, please ensure that you put it in this block because this is where we, we really look. We look at the whole application, of course, but this is really where we like, you know, take our notes and are like, okay, let's see if they said anything to us. We also highly encourage that if an MPF or CSS member is submitting an application on behalf of a member, they include their phone number in here. Because as stated at the very top, top member information, remember that this is the member's information that the record is being corrected. So not necessarily CSS or MPF that's submitting the application on behalf of the member. So if we try and reach out to this person, um, we're not necessarily getting a hold of the person that submitted the application. So if you're MPF for CSS, please, please just drop your phone number in the additional justification clarification section. So that way, if unfortunately your case is kind of an extensive one or it's gone back and forth a couple of times, we can go ahead and give you a phone call and kind of, you know, discuss it and hopefully get it processed and closed out without a lot of more like back and forth. So at the very bottom, we kind of just put a couple little notes just um, you know, kind of like FYI information. So something there is statutory members, uh, you guys will need to submit your ERAB applications to AFPC via VMPF for processing. DSG, TR, and like AGR, your applications will come to us to ARPC via VPC. Okay. For statutory members, again, you AFPC, and if you have any questions or it's your first time or, you know, whatever the case may be, you can always submit an email to NGBHR and kind of get some guidance from them. Okay, uh, ERAB applications, they must be filled out accurately and in their entirety in accordance with AFI 36 And again, kind of as I stated at the beginning, doing so will allow for a quick turnaround of processing the application, the request, and getting the member's record corrected as possible. Okay, so this document, Again, this one, along with the application template that you guys just saw, this is going to be on my PERS, and you guys also got copies of these um, when you got the invite for this training. But these are FAQs. So the ERAB team, we kind of try to come up with things that we see a lot of in terms of like my PERS question tickets being submitted um, or cases being returned for. So I'm going to go over the hot topics out of all these FAQs. Keep in mind that if you have like specific case scenario questions, um, we do kind of touch on some of those throughout here, so you can go ahead and look at that, um, you know, whenever, but I'm just going to go over the, the hot topics. Okay, so first one, what is the deadline to submit all necessary documents and evidence to ensure my case meets an ERAB? So if, just to keep in mind, ERABs um, are held quarterly, so March, June, September, and December. And as I previously stated, if you're if you have a case where you're wanting to change content, so content, bullets, ratings, things of that nature, that's when you're going to need to actually meet an ERAB, okay? A board, a board of your peers. Um, it's usually a panel of three. So we always have an enlisted member, an officer, and we always ensure that someone from JAG is on there, um, just because it helps to have a legal perspective. So the board is always made up of at least those three individuals, and the boards are held again March, June, September, and December. If you know you're meeting an OPB, I highly encourage that you, or you think you might be meeting an OPB, I highly encourage for you to start kind of reviewing your record about 90 days out, even a little bit before that. Because again, since the boards are held quarterly, you wanna ensure that you get all your, all your case information submitted to us in time for us to be able to put your case together and for the board to be able to review it and come up with a decision on your case, okay? So, for example, if you have a board that's meeting in September, like you're actually meeting an OPB in September, you want to ensure that all of your case information to, is given to us on the third Friday prior to the month in which the ERAB will convene, okay? And we usually hold the boards the first or the second week of each month. So, again, if you're meeting an OPB in September, you want to ensure that you get all of your case information to us by 20 August. So the third Friday of the month before that ERAB. All right, so this is kind of a big one. So for some reason, the status for ERABs, when we, EBAs, when we kick them back to you, they say return to member closed. Uh, we requested to have this change with due to like systems being, you know, they're going to be updated and changed. We're waiting for this change to occur. So we just kind of wanted to touch on this because this is something that, you know, 
is it's kind of a confusion topic. So if it says return to member close, it doesn't mean that your case is actually closed out. It just means that it's sitting with you and we return it to you with like guidance or requests or whatever, and you just need to update it and kick it back to us. So it does not mean that your whole ticket is closed out and that you need to submit a whole new application. Think of this kind of equivalent to when an EVR is returned to Raider or, you know, returned to initiator. It's the same thing. It's just simply sitting in your work bucket. You can go ahead and make any changes or adjustments to the ticket, and then you can kick it back to us. What is the turnaround time for processing an EREB application? So again, if it's for minor administrative corrections, it's approximately 10 calendar days. Um, it's a pretty, pretty quick process. Um, now, if you're trying to do, again, content and things like that, you kind of really want to get stuff to us, you know, 90 days or even before that, because you're, you're going to have to meet a board. And keep in mind that that 10, 10 calendar days for administrative corrections, that's under the assumption that we're not having to, you know, get your case, kick it back, get your case, kick it back. So keep that in mind. Anytime a case comes to us and then we have to return it, that restarts the 10 calendar days. So what is considered valid supporting documentation and evidence? So this is a big one. Um, just keep in mind that ERAB, it's again, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a case. You're requesting something and you need to provide us with the evidence so that we know that your request is in accordance with AFI policy. So for example, if you're like, hey, I want to change my duty title, not a problem. What you what we'll need from you in in terms of the attachments to supporting documentation to support your case or your request, you're gonna to want to give us the corrected copy. So you would just utilize the copy that's in your record currently, you would administratively change the duty title. So you detach that document for us. And then you'd also give us um, your duty title history printout or 2096. Um, so that way we have the corrected copy and the evidence supporting your request. Okay, and that goes for anything. If you have like, for example, a staff sergeant EPR in your record and it really should have been a tech sergeant, at that point you would give us the corrected copy to reflect as such um, and your promotion order. So that way we have the corrected copy along with the evidence to support your request. Okay, so that's for like administrative corrections. For content, um, again, like content bullets, ratings, things of that nature, at that point, you're gonna to wanna to give us as much evidence as possible because those cases meet a board and those individuals kind of use your evidence to determine whether your case is gonna be approved or not. So in that case, we want all the evidence as possible, um, if you feel you've been wronged or, you know, you know, unjust at that point, if you can give us IG findings, CDI findings, things of that nature, that helps. If you want to steer away from opinion based uh, MFRs or things of that nature. Like if you give us an MFR that's opinion based and you sign it, that's not really that's, you know, just it's not going to have as heavy an impact on the board members making an approved decision. So try and ensure that you give us factual um, and non-opinion based uh, evidence. All right, so this is another one. So if you're correcting an evaluation report that's over three years old, um, that's fine. The only thing that we require is that you provide us an MFR. Um, and again, please keep in mind that this is three years old from when it became a matter of record. So if you have a 2013 OPR, but it just got submitted in 2020, we don't need this, this time limit waiver. It's three years from when that evaluation became a matter of record. So if that's the case, you simply provide us with an MFR. The MFR does need to be signed by the actual member whose record is being corrected. So again, if MPF or CSS is submitting the application, they can't be the ones to sign the time limit waiver. It needs to come from the actual member and the member needs to explain, you know, what discrepancy they found in their record and why they want it corrected. Please keep in mind if you guys kind of look down here, it states like not to mention anything, failing to understand career impact in later years, being discouraged from you know appealing this process from your superiors or peers. So make sure when you write up your MFR, you're not talking about any of these things because we will have to kick it back and be like, you know, sorry, this can't be mentioned in your MFR. Um, so this right here, failing to understand career impact in later years, if you mention anything about an OPB or promotion board or job opportunities, things like that, it's going to get kicked back. Um, so please, you know, don't don't mention that. Don't say I did a scrub of my record for an OPB or I'm about to apply for a job and I was doing a scrub um, because that falls under this. And 
We kind of get this question a lot. If we have a template for you guys to utilize, we do not. So you'll simply just utilize the tongue and quill um, and that's how you'll make the MFR. Tongue and quill, make sure the member signs it, doesn't talk about any of the three things that they mentioned up above and it should be good to go. So this is also another hot topic. Does ERAB maintain hard or digital copies of my case information after it's after it's met the board? So again, you know, maybe some of you guys have experienced this, but if your case gets denied at the ERAB level, you're more than welcome to submit a new ERAB with new evidence, um, or you can go ahead and submit a BCMR. So if you submit an ERAB, it gets denied, your next avenue is BCMR. Uh, please, please, please keep in mind that we do not hold any, we don't hold any of the evidence, we don't hold anything in terms of the, of the outcome of the appeal. So you need to make sure that you hold on to that. Any of the evidence that you supply to us, to ERAP, make sure you keep it on hand and you have it so that way when you submit your BCMR, you have that documentation because we will not have it for you. We can't provide it to you because once the case is, you know, approved, denied, whatever, whatever the turnout is, we get rid of all of that information. Does anyone have any questions? Um, Chief Modoc, I'm open. Oh, no worries. I just wanted to um, give just a little bit more to the audience about um, when you mentioned the board ID in case folks don't know where to find the board ID um, for those officer promotion boards. So any, if it's ROTMA, it would be on the officer promotion guidance that comes out for the ROTMA board. Um, if it's a like unit vacancy, it would be on the 89-1 at the top. So I just wanted to throw that out there in case any folks were wondering, well, where do I find that at? Um, just throwing that out there. Over. Thank you, Chief. Okay. So again, if you guys, um, if systems aren't permitting you to ask questions or if you can't think of any questions right now, uh, you guys are more than welcome to submit the MyPERS tickets. Um, and again, I would just highly encourage that for the subject you put ERAB virtual training um, question. That way we can go ahead and make sure that an ERAB SME answers your question. Um, and again, please allow three to five business days for us to respond. Okay, well, thank you for your time and I hope you guys have a great day.